Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Gloria's Estates. And once again, we're going to uh, run one of our tutorial sessions. This is going to be about one of the most commonly, frequently asked questions uh, that I receive is about testing gold and trying to tell real jewelry from fake jewelry um, and the ways and the processes and everything in that range. So we have a wide, wide array of different kinds and styles of jewelry here. We're going to run through, we're going to show you the easiest, quickest, best ways to test mainly at home. Now, there are going to be some more professional tools here, but for the most part, you can do about 90% of this yourself, and that's really going to cut down on your margin of error. Well, the first thing that you need to do is the visual test. Now, that's not saying enough because I like to incorporate all the senses and we'll get around to that. But visually, first thing that you always want to do is run through and check for marks. So the very first thing that you're going to look for on a mark is, uh, or on any piece, is what is it marked. So we're going to get in close here. We're going to show you the mark on this one, right? And you'll notice up close that it actually reads 1 20th of 10 karat gold. A little forward, got it. Oh, okay. There it is, sorry about that folks. Uh, it actually reads 1 20th of 14 karat gold. Now the reason why I started with this one is I wanted to show you one of the more common styles that throws people off because they see that it says 10 karat gold, they see that it says 14 karat gold. And I've seen these numbers range all the way from 1 10th to 1 20th of 10 karat, 14 karat, 18 karat. But they're all essentially the same thing. That's exactly what it's written. It's 1 10th of 14 karat gold. So it's 1.4 karat gold, which means that it's a very minimal amount of gold. Now, we're not saying pieces like this are completely worthless, but they're not worth what a true 14 karat gold piece is worth. Um, when you're looking at gold, you're going to be looking for the primary markings of 10 karat, 14 karat, 18 karat, um, and we'll run through a few of those variations. So, uh, you're going to see 14K, 14KP, 18K. Um, there's also a numeral system, which is an older English style system, European style system of marking gold, which is with numbers. So, you see 417 inside of a ring that's actually marked as 10 karat. And everybody kind of asks me, why does it say 417? Well, gold is done on a uh, standard of 24 carats. So, if you have a piece of 24 karat gold, it's absolutely 100% pure. It's 0.999% pure. Well, if you have 10 karat gold, it's actually 0.417% gold. So by marking it 417 on the inside of a ring or on the end of a necklace, it's dictating to jewelers what percentage of gold is in that piece and therefore what carat it is. So you're going to be looking for 0.417. Uh, 0.585 is going to be 14 carat. And 0.750 is going to be 18 carat. Now, you will see a few odd variable pieces you'll see pieces that are marked 0.333. Now, everybody kind of gets confused by that because that is actually considered 9 carat. Now, it's not used in this country a whole lot. Traditionally, it's Old English and Old Irish craftsmen uh, that use that. Now, according to U.S. laws, the Federal Trade Commission and all their laws, anything under 10 carat in America is not classified as gold. So you can't sell nine carat jewelry as real gold because America doesn't count it as real gold. You can sell it as nine carat, but you can't sell it as gold. It's kind of an interesting little quirky thing, but it's kind of neat. Um, I like the old English and the old Irish trades craftsman stuff, but we don't come across it very often. I have put a few pieces on our page. Um, while you're at it, please remember that if you haven't gone to join us on Glorious Estates on Facebook or on YouTube, please jump on over, like us, share us, spread us around with your friends, 
because we're still trying to get this thing building and moving and going and running and jumping. And we really need your help and we really appreciate it when you do help us. All right, so uh, a couple of the other things that you're gonna look for is not just gold, but on other pieces of jewelry like silver. So what you're gonna be looking for is pieces that are marked sterling, marked 925. So if we take a close up look at this piece, you actually see that it reads 925. Well, the reason why it's marked 925 is again, back to the, the European numeral system, sterling silver is 92.5% pure silver. Now at this point, you're probably asking me, well, what's the other seven and a half? Or when you're looking at gold, what's the other percentage? Well, on gold, for the most part, it depends on where the gold is coming from, um, in what country, what variations they use. So you'll see a lot of gold, the traditional gold, being marked Italy. Well, when it's marked Italy in 14 karat or Italy in 10 karat, the rest of that mix is made up with a lot of nickel, a lot of zinc, uh, sometimes even silver. You'll see slight amount of copper and a few other mixed in metals that really help it get that traditional vibrant yellow that we know of as gold in this country. But if you are heavier on different metals, for instance, copper, you can get it to turn more of a rose gold or a Black Hills gold. And that's in fact what gives Black Hills gold, gold its distinct color is the high amount of copper and other minerals of the gold deposits up in South Dakota. So instead of it being the vibrant yellow, you'll see that rose, you'll see the other colors that come out in Black Hills gold. Same as in silver, the other 7.5% is traditionally going to be zinc or some other white metal. Now just because something is a different color doesn't necessarily mean that it's not real. Remember, they're starting this to make a lot more pieces out of varying colors of gold. I've even actually seen black gold. I've heard rumors of green gold, uh, red gold, which is actually rose gold, but super, super vibrant red. Now, some of these pieces have hit the market, but they haven't been really taken all the way out. So expect to see these. And if you deal in a lot of used secondhand pieces, start expecting to see a few of these as they come across. All right, so one of the other things that we're gonna look for is basically reading the piece to tell us what it is, right? So uh, you're also gonna be looking for anything in platinum. Well, platinum is traditionally marked as 0 0.900 or 0 0.950, depending on the purity, because those are the two purities that platinum traditionally come in, which is 90 or 95%. The other five to 10% is going to be iridium um, and it is still valuable but metal but it's not nearly as valuable as, as platinum now there are going to be a lot of instances where you're going to see other pieces marked uh, true to what the piece is for instance i got a really cool piece here um, i went through a bunch of my junk jewelry my other weird stuff and i really wanted to pick out a few pieces that not only showed off what we were doing but kind of give a perfect example of what to look for and what to read and why it's so important to get into of uh, visually inspecting all these pieces of jewelry. So when we look at this bracelet over here, you actually see that it's marked CU. Well, what is CU? CU is copper, right? And we're gonna flip this piece over. I'm gonna show you the, the top of it real quick. Believe it or not, this is a copper bracelet that has real diamonds in it. Now, everybody asks me, why would they do such a thing? Well, the used market sometimes on diamonds, especially of these lower quality diamonds, allows for people to incorporate them into different metals, different types, and make them not only uh, beautiful, but much more affordable. But if we flip this piece back over, you can actually see on a few of the links, the copper, the other metal colors coming through. All right, so those are the pieces that you're looking for. So, what are you looking, looking for to be real? What are you looking for to not be real? Now, this list is very, very varying. 
All right, so what you're going to be looking for is anything that says um, 14 karat GF. Now, GF is going to stand for gold filled. You're going to be looking for anything marked GP or GEP, gold plated, gold electroplated. Um, you're going to be looking for anything that's uh, HGE or HGP, which is the heavy gold electroplated or heavy gold plated. Um, and the reason why you'll see me referencing my notes is there are so many of these that if you're not sure, run to Google, run to, to uh, a book, help, call us, right? We'll help you. We'll walk you through it to make sure that you're not buying something that's not genuine. Um, a couple other things that you'll see in older pieces is you'll see stuff that's marked as rolled, rolled gold. Now, you don't see a whole lot of rolled gold anymore. But if you look into this piece, you actually see on the bottom where it says 10 karat rolled plate. Well, that's exactly what it is. It's simply rolled out onto the piece and attached to a base metal. Now, traditionally, throughout history, that base has been either a copper or a bronze or a brass or a nickel or a, a zinc, something that it will, that will adhere very well to. Um, so getting into that, right. One of the other pieces to look out for is anything that's marked vermeil. Now, actually, let me grab one of these pieces. And all that vermeil means doesn't mean that it's not real. It simply means that it's coated in gold. So you'll read a piece that says 10 karat gold vermeil. What it is is silver with a really thick a really thick plating on it. So what you're looking at is not a gold necklace. It's actually a sterling silver necklace with a very thick, heavy plating of gold all around the outside. Now, it depends on how good these plates are as to how long they last and how hard you wear them. And yes, different ladies wear different pieces of jewelry at different hardness, different wears. Um, so... You could wear this piece for the rest of your life and never see a speck of silver come through on it. And other ladies could wear it for a couple years and it would be completely silver toned. So that's really up to you. But if you see something marked 10 karat vermeil, don't buy it as gold, buy it as silver, right? Just thought that was kind of a cool piece. Um, all right. Uh, also, let's talk a little bit about pocket watches. Um, when you look on the inside of a pocket watch, a lot of times you'll see it say five year, 10 year, and 25 year. Now that's the same theory as the Vermeil plate, is that different watch companies put different strengths and different levels of gold plating on their watch. So a five year watch could be considered to be worn in a man's pocket and not wear off the gold for five years, 10 years, 25 years, you get it. So the higher the length of, the higher the years, the higher the quality of the watch, of the plate. Now, that doesn't mean to dismiss, they did make 10 karat, 14 karat, and 18 karat gold pocket watches. Absolutely beautiful pieces. We love to get our hands on them. Sometimes we can, sometimes we can't. So visually, remember to take every piece, Go all the way through it and remember to read it because you'll see all kinds of very interesting pieces like for instance we ran across this piece this piece is actually brass and it's marked brass with sterling hmm what is that well you can actually tell that the uh, the back is brass but the front actually has a coating of silver on it so uh, it's telling you exactly what it is believe it you know understand what it is, look at those markings, that's part of the visual test. Um, so, let's keep rolling through. I did say that this is a visual test, but there's more to it. One of the other things that I tell people to do when they're messing with any kind of jewelry is to use all of your senses. Well, as before, I told you that a lot of these pieces are brass or copper. So one of the tests that I tell people to do is actually to take a necklace like this, which is marked 14 karat gold, and smell it. 
Now, it sounds a little childish, it sounds a little far-fetched, but trust me, give it a good whiff, and here's why. What you're smelling for is you're smelling for the copper or the brass inside of the piece. If you smell an old brass bed or a penny, it's probably not real, right? So, gold has no smell. Platinum has no smell. Silver has a very distinct odor, but so does brass and copper. So between visually inspecting every piece, smelling every piece, using all of your senses, it will really help you out. Now also, that's not to say don't look over and above and beyond every single piece. For instance, we have this one here. Where was that perfect example I found? Ah, where you can actually see the gold plating starting to wear off on this piece, right? So the top of the piece has a beautiful gold plate, but anywhere where it came in constant contact, it started to slowly wear down, and now you can see that, so that zinc, that nickel starting to wear through and coming to life. Uh, I've got a couple other ones here. Hang on. I'm going to grab this one and set it right there. And if you look real close, close at the prongs, you can actually see the copper coming through, right? This particular piece is actually marked 925 on the inside of it, but you can flat out just visually tell by looking at it that something's not right. That's not sterling silver. So something's a little off with this piece. Remember, trust your senses, use your eyes, use your nose, you know, use your gut. It's very important. All right. Um, what else are we going to talk about with our senses visually? Hmm? Okay. Um, all right. When we talk about reading the interior of pieces, here's another one of the fun ones. We talk about reading the inside of, of this spoon ring, and this is actually marked as Onita and as Williams and Rogers. Well, or sorry, Williams Brothers. It, Rogers, Rogers and Company. If you know the makers of spoons, if you know the makers of flatware, you know which ones are silver most of the time or plated most of the time. Well, funny enough, on this ring, it's got two different names stamped on it, which is Rogers and Onita, which are the two primary companies that make plated flatware. Now, I'm not saying both companies didn't make real flatware, but if you know the history, you know the makers of flatware, it's going to help you decide on a couple of different pieces. All right, we're going to move on to the next quick and easy test. Um, and the next test is, actually real quick, let me hit these, hit this real quick. I want to show you the inside of this, right? And the reason why I'm showing you the inside of this ring and a couple other rings, see that green tint? Well, that green tint, and, and we've talked about this before in the last tutorials, about copper deposits and how copper turns green when exposed. So if you look on the underside of a ring or on the underside of a pendant and you see green spots like this, well, that's coming from copper deposits which have been um, uh, corrupted by the environment, by the air, by water, and automatically you should be suspect of the materials within this ring or within that piece because if there's green inside it or green around it, that automatically means that the copper's in there somewhere and it's gotta be coming from somewhere. All right. Well, the next thing that we test, the next part of the test is very, very simple. Grab a magnet. Um, now, I hope you grab something a little more strong than your kitchen magnet. We actually prefer earth magnets. You can get these basically online on Amazon. A couple of different stores sell them and essentially they're very powerful and will pick up almost anything. And if you run a good strong earth magnet over a pile of jewelry, it will quickly eliminate anything that is not genuine. Gold and silver and platinum are all non-magnetic. So if we take this and we run it over a pile of jewelry, voila, what do we have? 
it sticks to it, right? So we always make jokes about when we buy loads of jewelry or state's worth of jewelry um, that they tend to come in a Crown Royal bag, right? And they are completely mixed together and you can have all the way from one real piece to 300 real pieces bundled together and you need a quick and easy way to inspect them. Well, their earth magnet is one of the good ways to do it. In fact, I went ahead and made one of these. Yes, that's a lot of electrical tape, but you can just take this and run it over and anything that this picks up and is magnetized to, voila, it's not real, or at least it's not gold. So if you uh, are running through and trying to find which pieces are genuine and which pieces aren't quickly, the earth magnet is one of the best things that you can use for it. Now, after you're all the way settled and pulled out all the pieces that you're truly suspect about, I'm going to show you the truest test that you have. Now, this is going to be a little bit more advanced, um, a little bit more dangerous. So not for the faint of heart, anybody who's going to try this, please take proper safety precautions. We've been doing this for a long, long time and we still have accidents. Uh, we make fun of uh, getting yellow stains on our fingers from using what I'm going to tell you next about, which is the acid. So we use a style of acid, which is a mix of traditionally nitric and muriatic acid. Now you can get these in different strengths all the way from 10 carat to 14 carat up to 22 carat, which will, will almost dissolve pure gold. So this stuff is not for the faint of heart and dangerous. So please use in a well ventilated area. All right. Let's show you the way to use that properly. So we're going to grab this piece here and there's two ways to test with this. Uh, there's an intrusive way and a destructive way or a non, a non destructive way and a destructive way. I'm going to show you both and I'm going to show you which one I use and I prefer and everything like that. This piece here is marked as 10 carat. What you're going to do is you're going to grab a slate tile. Now, basically, you can use anything that's that's a strong, good, clean surface, because what you're going to need to do is take this piece and make a hard mark all the way across it. Right. And you see that gold line running all the way through. All right. So you're going to take your gold acid. And again, like I said, not for the faint of heart. And you're going to put one small drop right here. Now, you're going to look inside of that acid, and if that line disappears under that acid, it means it is not true 14 karat. Now, I like to use the 14 karat gold acid even on the 10 karat gold acid. I just get a truer response with it. Um, and we can do this with all different kinds of pieces in here. So if we take this piece and rub it across, Like I said, get a good, good strong line. And we're going to take this, put one small little drop on it, and voila. And you're going to look to see whether that line makes it through the acid. And you can clearly see how quickly that gold disappears, absolutely burns away through the acid. So this does take a little bit of practice. It does take um, understanding what it is, because once you get into using 10 karat and 14 karat and 18 karat, uh, reading the lines properly. However, it's not that hard. It's, it's, you will pick it up, and it's a very good at home, quick and easy way. Now, you also notice that on either one of those pieces did I do any kind of serious damage. So if you have a piece that someone's worried about, you're not removing a large chunk of gold. You're not destroying a large chunk of gold. All you're doing is simply writing a line across on a slate tile. Now, what's your other option? And I talked about a more destructive method. Uh, hang on one second, I need these. <clears throat> That's why an earth magnet is so important. That's how powerful they are. All right, so we're gonna take this piece here. We're gonna put it on our lovely piece of wood 
And this piece here, we're gonna take one drop and we're gonna put it directly on the piece. Now, what we're looking for is any kind of reaction um, at all. Now, it's it can smoke, but you're looking for if it turns colors, traditionally green, for the same reason as before with the copper and the brass, um, or if it wears away the gold, anything like that. And you'll notice the stuff is so powerful, it's actually smoking right out of the bottle. So we take a drop, put it directly on the piece, and what you'll notice is it instantly turns green and starts bubbling, right? Now what this is currently doing right now, and this is why you need to do this in a well-ventilated area, is it's releasing a light form of chlorine gas. And what it's doing is, is burning away any of the metals in this piece that are non-ferrous. So it's burning up any copper, any brass. And if we actually took this and soaked it in there, within a couple minutes, this piece would be reduced to absolutely nothing. It would, it would completely dissolve into that strong acid. Um, I'm going to tell you, you can order this stuff online. Um, don't recommend it a lot. But if you are going to, if you're worried, if you were uh, purchasing a lot of secondhand metals off people you don't know, um, are unaware of, or unsure about the history of, then absolutely. Now we come to another piece. I'm going to show you another one. This is another necklace that's marked 14 karat. And we're just going to take a little bitty drop. And we're going to drop it right on it. Boom. And you'll see how quickly it starts to turn brown. And you get the little marks of green on the inside. Right? And that's showing that this piece is not genuine, is not real. So we're going to do one more ring. We're going to put this one here. Now, if you're ever really suspect about something and you have a ring that you're not worried about how it looks, and you're worried about it having a really thick coating of gold on it, take this. What we're gonna do is file into it just a little. Doesn't have to be a lot, just get, you know, if you're worried about a good thick plate on it, get under that plate a little bit. Drop it right here. We're gonna put a drop on it. Same thing, we're looking for any kind of reaction. Come. Voila. Nothing at all. And here's why. This is actually 14 karat gold. So when we put it on a real piece, it does absolutely nothing. It'll smoke, it'll look like that, but it won't tinge, it won't tarnish, it won't bubble, it won't do anything at all. Voila. Pretty cool, huh? All right. So the nitric acid test is the basically the final almost at home piece that you can do there are a couple other more advanced mathematical tests that you can use there is one called the uh, uh, archimedes test now the archimedes test involves using your scale and comparing the specific gravity of a piece in water and the displacement of water uh, uh, versus the mass or the weight of the object and let me put that in English terms because I've never been a math teacher, never will be. Take a ring, throw it on the scale, and you know that gold of that weight will take up a certain amount of space. Well, how do you ma measure that space? Throw it in a jug of water. If the water ex uh, level is rises to that exact amount of space that that ring is supposed to take up compared to that weight of gold, you have real gold. I will tell you that it is a more mathematical way to do it. I do not see many people in this country use that. However, it's very popular, popular in Europe. Um, and if you are good at it, I understand that you can actually narrow it down more than most electronic testers because the numbers never lie. However, you will need very advanced scales and perfect knowledge of everything that you have in front of you. So really not for the faint of heart. Uh, there are other electronic testing methods that are out there. Now we have one of them here, the key tester. I like the key tester. I just don't use it a whole lot. Um, what the key tester actually does, and I actually had to write this down, 
Um, it measures the, de the decay of electrical current passing through the metal being tested. You rub two spots on the jewelry piece with a clean rubber eraser. Electronic gold testers offer the advantages over the acid method of testing the carrot of gold. And that's essentially what this is. If you know it's real and say it's unmarked and you're trying to decide whether or not it's 10, 14, 18, or 22 karat gold, this machine, the electronic machines are going to be a lot more specific about what you have and what carrot it is and therefore tells you a more appropriate value of what that piece is worth. There is one other machine out there which is the Nitron Spectrometer, uh, also called an XRF or an X-ray gun. There's a reason you don't see one here, it's because they're about $30,000. Um, they're wonderful pieces of equipment. I would love to get my hands on one. I'm just not dropping 30 grand. If you'd want to, please give me a call. I'd love to come over to your house and play with it. All right, so let's keep rolling. And uh, we're gonna do a couple of quick tests on here um, with different metals and what else to look for. So one of the big things that everyone kind of got into lately was looking at alternative metals. So this one here is actually titanium with a good thick heavy plate. And I'm just kind of curious to see what happens if we throw a little acid on it and we see what happens to this plate over time. Now sometimes on these plated methods, you are going to have to um, let them sit for a few minutes. And the other thing is, is remember that if it's a ferrous metal, same as gold or silver or platinum or palladium, um, it's not going to affect it. So a lot of it is going to depend on you making the right call whether or not to even add acid at all. And you'll see there's a slight green ring forming on the inside. So this is a good thick heavy plate, but you got to get close. And remember, that's why you need good ventilation, right? See that green smoke coming off of it? Don't breathe that in. Um, one last fun thing I wanted to talk about real quick was bullions and coins right so when you have bullions and coin like this you can also use that same acid now a lot of people get worried about them being there being uh, plated pieces like this everybody says no nobody would ever do that yes they do <laughs> so let me show you these real quick all right so we're going to bring that piece down and that piece down and you can obviously tell which one of this, which one of these is a common tester. And if there is something already drilled into it, go ahead and put the acid right there. And we're just going to drop a little piece here and voila. And you'll notice the piece on the right instantly turns. That white milk, it shows that it's not genuine. We're on the other piece. It'll sit there till the cows come home and do absolutely nothing. So we're gonna get rid of this. We're gonna make sure it doesn't cloud the place up. And our real piece, I'll take care of that in a minute. I wanted to show you silver, right? So if you take the same acid and put it on a silver dollar, you're looking for that same green reaction and voila what do we have here we have a fake silver dollar because what it is is burning through and actually <clears throat> sorry about that and actually uh yeah that's pretty strong um turning turning the copper and the, uh, the nickel and every all the other non-ferrous metals um into and burning them away sorry i got a little distracted because that that was that was actually a really bad blast. <laughs> so, um, all right. Anyhow, I figured we covered a lot of the really good basics. The one last thing I want to leave you with is uh, to remember to not always believe brands on it because we're going to have, we have a couple pieces here that are marked Tiffany and Pandora. And same kind of deal that even though it's marked Pandora, take a really good visual close look upon that and what you'll see right in here is actually tinges of tinges of copper coming through 
on the piece. Same as on this Tiffany necklace. Now, I have posted my Tiffany necklace before, um, but voila, same kind of thing. You can see along the edges, anywhere it was actually worn, that that copper color is tinging through. So don't be afraid to take just a little drop, put it on each piece, and instantly you can see the green, the bubbles, the, the release of gas, and no, instantly Tiffany and Pandora are gonna use real silver, sterling silver, 92.5% 92.5% pure, and they will have no kind of reaction like that. All right, folks, well, I hope you all had a really fun time, a really good day. I hope you learned something. Um, I know this stuff is kind of mediocre to advanced, and a lot of it is, and this will get you through 90 to 95% of everything you could need to buy secondhand jewelry and do it the right way. What I can tell you as we leave, the most important thing is to use your senses, use your sight, get you a decent loop, get you a decent headgear. I know it looks makes you look, eh, you know, but these can save you and this can save you from making a bad accident, right? Purchasing something for way more than it's worth. Um, take your time, go through it all, make sure it's all right, it's kosher, it's good, and have a good time with it right? There's a lot of good stuff out here. There's a lot of good stuff in here. And you know what? We can have fun with it. In the meantime, I had a blast today. Please, if you, if you watched all the way through, please like us, please share us with your friends because a show like this is actually very important. Um, and it could save you money or somebody else you love money in the future. And until next time, we'll see you then.